lucky day. I'm going back. I really wanted that fish. There's how you end the Keys trip right there, oh, dude. Oh, there we go. The Florida Keys is considered by many the greatest fishing destination in the world, and for good reason. At the southernmost tip of Florida, it's a chain of islands with endless possibilities. From bridges to offshore opportunities, inshore opportunities, endless flats, mangroves, and more, it truly is a place where fishing dreams come true. I went with my good friend Rich, aka the one and only Fishaholic. We went and targeted some tarpon in residential canals and then visited the most iconic landmark in the Keys and arguably one of the most popular bridges in the world, the Seven Mile Bridge. What is up guys? Welcome to day two in the Florida Keys. Today we had a kind of a crazy start because it was hard to find a boat launch. It's Saturday, so you guys know how it is. All the weekend warriors are out here. They're trying to enjoy the nice weather. We also had a lot of that overcast sky clear up, so the sun is out and the visibility is amazing. So everybody's out trying to hang out with their families, run their boats, etc. So all the boat launches were packed. We paid $70 to launch our boat and park the car. That's the most I've ever paid at a boat ramp. If you've paid anything more than that, drop a comment below because I was like sticker shocked like crazy. But anyways, it was a little hectic. Lots of people were finally here, finally on the water and our plan today is very simple. We are going to fish the most iconic landmark in the Florida Keys, that being the Seven Mile Bridge. The plan is to try to catch snappers, jacks, groupers, snook, and maybe even a nice big tarpon. We really just have to see what the ocean brings us because the Seven Mile Bridge has a vast ecosystem with tons of different species, so you never really know what you're gonna get into, but we're gonna give it our best shot and we're gonna try to get on some good fish for you guys. So let's get out there, let's get some lines in the water. Uno, dos. I'm trying to get some live baits and some pilchards. I just saw a fair amount, so that's probably a little ball of bait. All right, check that out, guys. <laughs> I got some little sand perch or maharas. They're going in the well. Perfect snapper bait. All right guys, so we just were catching bait. We got a fair amount, probably like two or three dozen mohara, pilchards, and uh, some glass minnows. But as we were turning the corner to go 10 minutes into this no wake zone to catch more bait, we saw a live bait boat. And look, dude, it's, it's a matter of convenience. And if you have the means, 40 bucks for like six dozen primo pilchards, saves us like an hour of time and we're only here for three days so we did it we bought some bait you know we're not ashamed and we're gonna go and catch giants with those baits so shout out to russell for the live bait such a nice kid hooked it up too with all that live bait we're gonna go start by trying to catch some tarpon there's a good trough by the edge of a flat near this bridge where it has a strong rip and a lot of those tarpon will kind of sit and circle in that trough and we're hoping that with this primo bait we can catch some of them so we're gonna see we're gonna get over there we're gonna use some circle hooks with some what probably 40 pound test fluorocarbon 40 50 40 50, 50 pound 50. test fluorocarbon and see if they'll bite so let's get over there let's get some lines in the water See right by this bridge here, there's like a little trough right around the pilings. Right here to the right, there's a flat, and then on the other side, there's a nice flat. And as the current flows through here, the fish sit in that little deep trough just waiting for any kind of bait fish to, to get swept over the flat into that deeper water, and then they just jump up and pop them. So it's pretty cool. We're in. Guys, I'm, I'm really light line here. I'm 30 pound test floral, which is probably pretty dumb. Um, you know, hopefully I hook into a smaller tarpon if we get one or a smaller something because 30 pound test fluoro is not ideal. All right. There he is. Good fish. Good fish here. Oh, he just oh. came off right there. Yeah, just came off right there. Just got crushed on the swim bait. What could that have been? And then he pulled me down in the grass and just came off. Maybe it was a small grouper. I'm going to put my hook inside the mouth and up through the head like so. That way I can just bring it right back to me. 
It's a good sign. Oh, the motor's on. We're on. You're on? Yep. It's on. Grouper. Grouper, nice. That's probably what I had hit. Better one, too. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. That's a gag. Sweet, dude. Guys, check that out. Pretty sure that's a gag grouper, Rich said. You know, I don't know my grouper species that well, so beautiful fish on the live bait. Absolute grouper are some of the prettiest fish you can catch. Like they have so many different distinct colors, like light browns, tans, blues. Look at that mouth. That is just meant for killing. Let's drop her back in. She's off. All right, we're at our next spot and a little change of scenery. As you can see, a lot more structure and it's a lot deeper water. And I think we'll have a better opportunity to catch a, a more array of different species here. And I'm hoping that I can get maybe like a nice mutton snapper at this spot. So I'm gonna rig up a fish finder rig with probably like three, four or five ounces of weight and maybe like a 10, 15 foot leader. And we'll see what hits it. So let's do it. Before dropping bait, I do have to take a couple casts with a lure to see what hits it. Might get surprised by something. There he is. Fish on. Oh, we got a yellow jack. Look, he's got a follower. Throw your, throw your voodoo shrimp out. Throw your voodoo, out, voodoo shrimp. Yeah, probably eat that. Wait till you guys look at this yellow jack. They are so beautiful. They're also really good eating. I haven't had the pleasure to eat one yet, but every time I catch one, people tell me I should. Today we don't have ice, so this one's gonna be lucky as well. And we're gonna send her back. Yeah, he's there down low, I can wait. Look at that. Beautiful. On just that little swim bait right there. So let's pop that swim bait out now. Nice and easy, and we'll get her back. I like that, that was fun. There he is. This one's ripping. Oh, look at the size of that one. That's a good size yellow jack. Wow, that is big. Yeah, that's probably my personal best right there. Wow. That's a big yellow jack. Yeah, I've never seen one this big. Oh man. Right. Look at the size of that yellow jack. Crushed the swim bait, just like the first one today. Oh, these fish are so gorgeous. Or this could be a bar jack. All right, that is beautiful. All right, well, let's see if we can get another one. I think that one was uh, a yellow jack. It could have been a, a bar jack. Comment on the, on the video if uh, you uh, have the correct name of that fish. Either way, they're both good eating. They both are very closely related and they fight good. So Aaron and I aren't gonna complain if we get a few more, right? No, not at all. First cast in <laughs> the swim bait, I got yeah. hit. They're just sitting at the bottom. Ah, got snagged, dude. No, that's a fish. <laughs> it must have popped out and the fish hit it. Yeah. Nice, Aaron's on. 
They love that swim bait. Dude, why? Why is it why is it so much better? That's crazy. They love this thing. Yeah. Guys, I was just telling Rich how crazy it is that these are actually delicious fish, and they're so closely related to Jack Creval, which are not good at all. And it's just crazy the way fish species work. Beautiful fish, super fun, and uh, we're gonna get a quick release. Let's try a long cast out by those pilings and then we'll probably keep on working the main channel but there's just so much water to cover you gotta sometimes just cast all around the boat to figure out what's around you and i'm basically just getting this to the bottom and then giving it some hard upright jigs as it swings in the current and that's how i'm getting hit there he is. Got one? Yep. Wow. They're stacked up. Whew. It's good to see that they're on both sides of the boat. They're not just by that bulkhead structure. Whoa. Whoa. I'm coming on this side. I didn't want to waste that giant. What do we got here? Oh man. Whew. Ah. Another good jack. Perfect. I might take just a couple more casts and then I might switch to dropping some bait on the bottom and see if uh, maybe there's some snapper that I want to eat. Guys, so we're fishing the infamous Seven Mile Bridge, probably the biggest landmark in the Keys. And Rich got on an epic bite pretty quickly on the yellow jack and uh, he was using a weighted jig head that's a little different than other stuff. So it's like this jig head that you call it like a bullet weight, right, Rich? Yeah, bullet weight. Bullet weight jig head, which is pretty cool because it goes straight down and sinks faster than other jig heads of the same weight. And so he was bouncing bottom and so he so graciously gave me one of these and we're basically gonna be tossing it around. The goal is to get the jig to sweep towards the boat, right? That's the natural presentation. Bait fish are small, as the current goes out, they get swept out with it. And so the bow of the boat is facing the direction of the current. And so basically this current is coming towards the bow. We're casting up it, letting this hit the bottom and just bouncing it. And so on the bottom, it just looks like this, just up, down, up, down. Pretty aggressive snap jigs and uh, trying to see if we find a school of fish down there because the predatory species are typically facing the direction of the current. So that would mean that the fish head is facing this way, similar to the boat position. And as the bait comes sweeping towards it, it goes right into its mouth. Boom, you get thumped as all anglers say. So that's the goal, you know. Not sure if uh, we're gonna get more or if we killed the bite or what, but we're definitely gonna try. See what we can get into. There he is. Maybe this will be something different. It kind of feels like it. Maybe it'll be a bigger Jack Kerbal. It's got some good weight to it. Woo! There he goes. These fish are pulling extremely hard because once they get their head in that current and start swimming down with it, they're just ripping so much more line. Oh, we got a follower, Aaron. Follower, follower, follower. Yeah, right here. Come on, vamo, 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 va. <laughs> He's right here underneath us. You could just try vertical jigging it. Uh, he might have went away. Uh, 
another good size one right there. Beautiful. He's saying hello. Click that like button. <laughs> Subscribe. Right, buddy? Yeah. I think that's what he's saying. Got it. Got it. Dude, that was a giant fish, bro. You shot a giant one? Giant fish. All right, so I'm gonna take a little break from the jack action. I caught like, I don't know, six or five, six, something like that in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so now I'm gonna try and just see if I can get on a bottom bite. Uh, we've got quite a bit of current, so maybe I'll try three ounces, but also pull out a five, because if we're not holding well enough, with uh, our fish finder rig, then we'll just go up a little bit. And then I think I'm also gonna try and put on a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader to start. And this water's crystal clear, so I'll probably pull off two arm lengths full, or maybe even a third. So I'm like a little over six feet, so we'll just call that like an 18 foot leader. And sometimes in the clear water, that's what you need to do. And I'm just really trying to get a bottom bite because it'd be really cool to find out what is down there. So that's what I'm gonna do with my leader. That should be good. Tie on a barrel swivel and then a little circle hook. I'm drop it down. On the light rod. Big yellow jack. He's got followers. It's a good one. Wow. Jump all the way out of the water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, on this bait caster, it's so much fun, dude. Oh my god, we're a riot. Guys, this is an ultra light bait caster. Great for sensitivity and feeling bottom. Perfect for fish up to this size. Any bigger, and we're in trouble. That's a good one, though. Smoked it. All right guys, so we got another little yellow jack here. I'm pretty sure it's yellow jack. I know nothing of these things. I never catch them. Yellow jack, bar jack. Absolutely threw down. Nice and chunky one. And it was on the ultralight bait caster, which was just a riot. 20 pound test to 10 pound test braid. So these girls go fast. So we're just gonna give them a head dive. Take the fish grips out at the same time. Oh, I'm getting some bites, getting some bites. I was being swarmed on this one, okay? You don't get one until you get one. Oh, there he is. Fish on. Oh, look at that. We've got a beautiful schoolmaster snapper, I believe. No, actually, correct correction, dog snapper. That is a dog snapper. Other way. Beautiful. That didn't take long. That was like the first minute that the bait hit the bottom. See ya. They have to be 12 inches to keep, I believe. That one was probably a little short. There we go. Oh. might not be a yellow jack. It's not, it's a grouper. I'm the grouper man, huh? How many of these have I caught? Four? Guys, another one. What a beautiful fish. Ready to send her back and keep vertically jigging while we've got some fish down there. That's epic. So one of the best things about fishing the bridges down here in the Keys, guys, is sometimes you never really know what you're gonna get until you dial in on what's here. And uh, you know, month to month, there can be different species um, that are in higher concentrations along all the bridges from Key Largo to Key West. So, of course, time on the water is gonna be the best way to figure that out. Or if you just come out like us and we fish all day and grind hard, uh, you know, we get a little luck. <laughs> fish on. Sounds like the nylon is good. <laughs> uh, okay. I think it's another snapper. Yeah. 
this is a school and master snapper right here. Look at that beautiful fish. That one might have been a keeper. They, those ones only have to be 10 inches to keep. All right, we made a move to the other side of the channel. The bite over there kind of died off. So let's see what happens. So guys, we just made a small move. Basically, we moved across. We were on that fender there, and now the tide has switched. So now we're on this fender here. We got really good anchorage, and we're marking a fair amount of fish. So I'm just kind of aggressively vertically jigging. Oh my God, dude. Come look at the screen. Stack. Stack. Oh, there we go. Fish on. That one? Yeah. Little grouper. Another little grouper? Yeah. There it is. Another beautiful grouper. Going back. Boom. Gone. Gone. Good fish. Good fish. Yeah. Come on. It's another good yellow jack. Oh, there's some behind it. Honestly, I want to get this one off quick because our unit is loaded and I think I'm about to get into them really quick. Beautiful fish, guys. Look at that. Dropping her head first and throwing right back. You got to be quick. When the fish are here, you want to get them while it's hot and they're here, dude. Like our unit is stacked. That's two casts, two fish. Let's see if we can go for three casts, three fish. There are so many. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I got another one. Got, I got followers, I got followers. Yeah, just a little yellow jack. It's a feisty one. Cool. All right, I'm gonna try this little crab drifted out the back now. Maybe we'll get lucky and a perma will eat it. Let's do it. Oh, I just got hammered on the crab. Did you? Yeah, something's got it, something decent. There he is. Wow. Something decent on the crab. Could it be a permit? Could it be? Oh my gosh, he's going to the structure. Oh no, 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 no. Oh my god, Rich. Is it in it? Yeah, I hear it. It's on it. Oh shoot. I didn't see that coming. I didn't think he would get in there. I don't think there's anything we can do besides pray. Unless you want to go to the other side. Hold no, no, hold on a sec. He might come out. He might come out. That's crazy. I thought he would have ran down current. This is smart fish. There it goes. Come on. Broke me off. That could have been a permit right there. <sighs> Man, I really wanted that fish. That was a whole crab. I thought that fish would have went that way, but he was smart. Went right into that structure, and there wasn't anything I could do. Dang it! Yeah, when that fish first hit, it was kind of it was kind of questioning, you know, what it could have been. It could have been like a mutton, or like a, a jack could have picked it up. But when it started angling towards that structure, and then it probably saw the structure, and then just started ripping and dumping line, then it it started pulling much like a, a, a nice size permit. So. I actually was using 40 pound fluoro to 25. And oh, oh, Aaron just hooked up on something big. Oh, oh broke my God. That Gone. was such a big fish. That might have been like a grouper or like a big jack or ball or something. But I'm going to go up a little bit in leader. I'll try 30, 
to this 40, you know, maybe like a arm's length of it, and maybe that'll help, or we won't get a bite at all. <laughs> we'll find out. Wow. With a rod that's that light and tall, and takes it takes the brunt of the tension off of the line. So even though 20 pound test is really light, it kind of, with a rod that flexible, it acts almost as 40 pound test because, again, as that rod gets all that flexion, it's taking the majority of the tension off of the line. But that fish was huge. Like That was the biggest fish of the trip for me, twice in a row, by far. Like, no, There's no comparison to anything that I've caught yet. So unfortunately, we lost it twice. I'm surprised I didn't break off the first time. And because I didn't break off, I was like, oh, let me send it back with the same rod. And uh, unfortunately, that yielded my break off. And now I'm not getting a hit. But they're still here. Oh, check out that. That's a good sized schoolmaster. That's definitely a keeper. Definitely over 10 inches. I do have my vacuum sealer in the truck. Oh my god, those are what? Just oh, you, you saw a big school? Of them? Sweet. I think I'm gonna throw this guy in the well and I'll just bleed him. Check that out, guys. On my favorite inshore lure, which I haven't thrown much because it's so deep, I normally throw with a 3 8 ounce head. That's not gonna get down in this current. On a Charlie's Baits. Twitching shad. It's basically like a paddle tail style fluke, but yellow jack. Going back. They followed this in every single time they followed this in. Every single time. That one ripped it, but to be honest, that may make the action more erratic, so I'm gonna keep it keep it going. Smaller size that's just below this one, but got it. it might work. Got it. Oh, you're on. That's a really big fish. Dang. Guys, we gotta go. We gotta go on a heavier rod. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna sacrifice sensitivity, but like, I'm getting. I'm. I'm getting demolished right now. Yeah. Look at that one. Look at that one. Why are they not committing? They Here, let me go over you. Yeah, followed it in again. I love this thing, man. This thing is my favorite inshore lure. I just don't like using it here because I normally use like a 3 8 ounce J head. Yeah. This is absurd. I have, oh, I had a hit. I had a one ounce head on this tiny little tail. There he goes. Yeah, I got him. Nice. Yeah. Brought her up quick this time. We got the heavier gear, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Never mind, scratch that. Oh my god, this is what happened multiple times. Oh god. Guys, scratch that. I don't think the jack knew it was hooked. This is one of my favorite things today, bro. In the boat. Just a chunkier one. Guys, check that out. What a beautiful fish. Heard they're great table fare too. Guys, I'm a dweeb. I have nothing else to say. Just comment below if you think I'm a dweeb. There he is. Got him. Wow, this is a good one here. He's ripping. Oh my God, a shark right there. Let me see that. Big shark just came up and tried to eat him. Oh, there he is. Oh man, it's a lucky yellow jack. That is. Oh my gosh, don't fall in, everybody. All arms and knees and legs stay on. Let's see if this chartreuse works. That was pretty cool. And it's kind of tradition, you know, every time you fish the seven mile bridge, you gotta have a shark encounter, or at least that's what happens to me. But luckily today I'm in a boat and not the kayak. 
Yeah. Both of us haven't fished here in a really long time. I haven't fished here since last year. I, Aaron, what, 10 years since you left? Yeah, like here? 10 years. Guys, there's a million years. And it's cool that, you know, we at least found a bite or a consistent bite of these jacks here uh, rather than, you know, just coming here and catching kind of you know, one fish each of, you know, the various different species. Uh, it it kind of makes us feel like we accomplished something, right? Yeah, no, 100%. By kind, of, by kind of dialing in on this one particular species really well. And there's definitely not, it's not really like a hard fish to catch, but with ripping current in, you know, deeper-ish water, there's definitely a technique that you have to master for it. And, you know, you can't just go up and down and, and fish anywhere on this bridge to probably catch these guys. I mean, at times you can if you're swimming back and forth, but uh, you know, we're lucky today that they're just stacked up right here by the channel. And I also think like anytime you're jigging for a fish and you're, you're going that deep into the water column and, and you get to feel that thump, it's just more rewarding. You know, it's just uh, similar to like a top water bite or something. It's just a certain type of thing that when you feel it's really exciting as an angler, that boom on that rod, like I'm on. You know, and like Rich said, Yellowjack might be easy to get in some circumstances, but we've seen hundreds of boats come and go and keep leaving because they don't hook up to anything. Live bait hasn't been working at all. We've presented pilchers in a myriad of different ways. We've tried tons of different swim baits. They're keened in on one type of swim bait, one color. That's it. And if you don't have it, they're not eating. And even then, you've had to change your cadence so many different ways. You know? So. Oh, there is. oh that's a good one. Hold on, I'm going to follow you up. That's a good one. Well, actually, I'm getting by a shark, but... Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's a good one. Oh, wow. he's jumping. He's jumping. <laughs> Where's the net? Where's the net? Oh, my gosh. Oh, he almost jumped on the boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he kind of jumps like in the net. You cannot deny that these fish are a ton of fun and just extremely beautiful. And Aaron and I both, you know, live up in uh, Port St. Lucie, Stewart area, and we can't catch these on the regular. In the summertime, sometimes they're up there, but this time, this time of year up there, you know, we're kind of restricted to snook, jack curvall inshore, and you know, the occasional tarpon. So it's really fun to switch it up. Right, bro? Oh, 100%. I wanted to come to the Keys and just catch stuff that I couldn't catch. And after catching tons of these, like, it's a riot, man. Especially on really light tackle, jigging. It's been a riot. I Let's failed on the double up, but. Oh, oh all right. That's a good one. Aaron is That's on. a really Aaron is good on. one, dude. That's a really good one. <laughs> don't lose them, don't lose them. Oh my God, big grouper. Did oh, you get the net? Oh, nice. Oh, the net's right here. That is, I think a black grouper. A good black oh, grouper. Oh, there's Woo! how you end the key strip right there, oh, dude. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, so epic. Thank you, fishing gods. Yeah, this is Shit. perfect. Hold, hold them up for the camera. Yeah, I will, hold on. This is it. It's, hot. it's the sun. It's the sunset. It's the sunset. Wait, man. I need a gun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right. Look what she just spit up. Check that out. Guys, look at that. That's how you close out a key strip right there. A freaking nice grouper and a nice freaking yellow jack. Look at how much this so thing cool. inhaled it. We're going to try to get these fish back ASAP. So I'm going to pop this out. Thank you guys fire. so much for watching. Guys, you got, if you don't subscribe for this last second double up, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Cheers to that. Let's get them back, right? Yeah, let's go. Look at this grouper, man. I don't want to put my hands in there because the shark, but sliding out. That thing kicked off so beautifully. Careful, Rich. Oh my God, you're making me nervous. Can you, can you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna still do it. Risked it to get the shot. After seeing that shark, it was a little sketchy doing that. Risk your hand. Let's get for out of here, right? Alrighty, guys, that is a wrap for our Florida Keys send. 
This is why the Florida Keys is the most popular inshore fishing destination in the world. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you've made it this far, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I want to give a special shout out to Hook for sponsoring this trip. I want to give a special shout out to Garmin, Mako, Bass Pro Shops, Tracker Boats for making trips like this possible on an amazing vessel like this. And of course, Saltwater Sportsman Adventures. If you guys haven't already followed, liked, subscribed, and been a part of this journey with Saltwater Sportsman Adventures, Saltwater Sportsman is doing so much for the fishing community and making trips like this possible. And you guys can watch them from the comfort of your own home. So thank you guys again for tuning in. Shout out to all our amazing sponsors. We'll see you guys on the next video.